Kaido, the man who wanted to become Joy Boy at any price but couldn't. The experiment from Punk Hazard that was so successful they couldn't contain him and on top of all that probably the best villain in the entire story. We're talking about all of that today. But if you aren't caught up with the manga yet, click off this video right now, run to the local bookstore, buy all the current manga volumes of One Piece, catch up to the story in one session and then come back to this video. But if you are, let's begin. Here's a quick recap. Kaido is the physically strongest being in the One Piece world. He was experimented on by the world government, got his dragon devil fruit from Big Mom during the so-called God Valley incident and spent his entire life obsessed with awakening Joy Boy and changing the world. At some point, he went from eager and always laughing to suicidal drunk that wants to start the largest war the world has ever seen. How did Kaido get that strong? Well, I'm pretty sure that Kaido's flashback is just around the corner or maybe already here if you watch this. If so, please make sure to let me know in the comments how wrong I was. But here is what I think has been hinted at. Kaido and also King in extension are experiments from Punk Hazard. We know that he has been captured by the Navy multiple times Times and that he escaped from a research facility. And not only is Punk Hazard the largest facility we know, but it is connected to Kaido in a number of ways. The research conducted there basically can all be seen in Kaido's character in one way or form. We know about the research on gigantification, including the numbers who stem from Punk Hazard. <laughs> In other words, Vegapunk was researching ancient giants in this facility and Kaido clearly resembles the general appearance of the likes of Ors. We literally see a skull just like Kaido's on the door to the lab as well. <laughs> then there is the fact that Kaido is a dragon. Not only do we see an artificial dragon on the island, but Momonosuke literally finds a perfect copy of Kaido's fruit in the lab. And this is of course also connected to Caesar's artificial smile devil fruits, another product from Punk Hazard together with the numbers that Kaido has been using to build up his army. So to me at least, it does seem very likely that Vegapunk was experimenting with his devil fruit powers after the God Valley incident. Maybe that was where he got captured in the first place, betrayed by Rock. Who knows? Now, the question is, is Kaido related to the ancient giants by blood and they made the numbers based on him? Or did he also receive his horns and size during that time? Now, based on the rock silhouette we got and Yamato having horns as well, I would suspect the former. But Oda seems to be holding back Kaido's younger appearance on purpose for some reason. Like in this short flashback in chapter 1041, where we just see Big Mom from his first person perspective. But what does this all mean for his character and his connection to Joy Boy? Now, I have heard people whining about Kaido being a one dimensional villain basically for the first two acts of Wano straight. And I mean, Fair enough, because until the start of the raid, we have gotten only very, very, very little characterization for his character, though I personally think that Oda, right from the start, had set him up to be the most interesting villain in the story so far. <laughs> But ever since, uh, those voices have mysteriously vanished. Because I think it's fair to say that his real characterization started with Act 3. We saw Kaido establishing his powers in Wano during Odin's flashback, unhonorably defeating Odin after getting his scarf from him. How he formed an alliance with Big Mom, how he got rid of Orochi for being the most annoying character in the entire story, announcing the new Onigashima initiative, taking out all of the scabbards, revealing that he knew about Joy Boy all along, taking on his own child, showing us his first meeting with the Lunarian King, and finally having the fight of his life with Luffy, the first person that could seriously challenge him since Odin, I guess. 
until he got robbed of that by CP0 as well. Over the course of what in the story is just a single night, that's crazy to think about, Ichiro Oda, the author of One Piece, has pulled back the curtains on the final villain of the Yonko saga that has lasted the entirety of the new world so far. Why do I say that? Well, I was just getting to that part. Jesus. What's up, Amano? And let me start this with a prediction. I think Kaido's arc will end with him laughing during his fight with Luffy, liberated from his heavy burden. I think it's pretty clear that Kaido, just like Big Mom, has been portrayed as someone who originally had good intentions at some point to change the world to the better by finding the One Piece, making it a better place for everyone to live in. <laughs> Big Mom wanted to create a world where all races can live in harmony, and it seems like Kaido wants to end the rule of the world government, most likely after having suffered at their hands. And so in chapter 1036, Kaido says that he's the only one who can change the world, implying that it's a responsibility that he has to the world, and later even asks King if he still considers him to be Joy Boy. It seems pretty obvious to me that Kaido wanted to become Joy Boy, the person who will bring the dawn. Actually, fun fact, a common kanji reading for Kaido in Japanese is actually Joyful Boy. To me, that shows that he seems to have some idea at least what it takes to become or awaken Joy Boy. In his mind, it seems to require being the strongest in the world and maybe even dying. I mean, this would be supported by his repeated efforts to get killed and Luffy possibly even dying in chapter 1043. He even tells Luffy very disappointedly that it seems like he couldn't be Joy Boy either after knocking him out in chapter 1014. And yet, even after fighting strong opponent after strong opponent, Kaido just couldn't become Joy Boy until now. Many of his biggest rivals died before he could actually face them. And not only that, they all had grand achievements before their death. Roger became Pirate King and started the Great Pirate Era. Whitebeard, whom he really wanted to fight at Marineford, I assume, rekindled the dream of the One Piece. Odin, who was strong enough to face him, died as an inspiration to the people of Wano. And meanwhile, Kaido only defeated him and Luffy after someone else distracted them. I think that Kaido had one out of two goals. He either wanted to try to become Joy Boy himself by facing off against the strongest possible opponents, or help someone awaken Joy Boy in return by being the strongest possible opponent for them. His great responsibility, but no one ever did awaken including him. That and his trauma of his inglorious victory over Odin made him lose sight of his dream for a better world. Just how Big Mom became a monster in the name of a better future, so did Kaido, using and enslaving the people of Wano for the greater good or whatever. Kaido is basically the embodiment of strength and toxic masculinity, I guess, because he doesn't allow himself to be soft or vulnerable. He literally drowns his fears and doubts in alcohol and forces himself to be hard. He can't openly love his child Yamato, but be hard so she can help him with his duty. He still finishes off Luffy and Odin, despite hating himself for having been robbed of a fair fight. And so in a way it seems like he willingly takes on this role of the villain in order to fulfill his goal, even if it eats at him every single day. Now, what I love about all this is that not only does it make Kaido one of the most complex and multi-layered villains in the story, but that it also draws a very interesting parallel to Luffy's fight with Katakuri. If you want a full breakdown of Katakuri's character and that fight, I did make a whole video about that a while ago. But what's important for us right now is that Luffy liberated Katakuri from the mask he had to put on to protect his family. <laughs> He needed to be the strong older brother that takes care of everybody, not allowed to show any weakness or any of his dreams or desires. And so it took Luffy with his unique ability to see people's true nature and feelings, who understands this over the course of their fight, and then pushes Katakuri to drop his mask quite literally by throwing away his scarf and being himself, freeing him in the process. 
The difference to Kaido is that when Flampe interferes with the fight, Katakuri has already started to shake off his duty and wants to continue this fight fairly, which is why he does one of the most ballsy things in the entire story. Now, to understand how this is connected to Kaido, let's take a look at Kaido's state of mind after Luffy's defeat with the help of CP0. There was actually this really interesting breakdown by this Korean One Piece fan that actually also references the Katakuri connection that I think complemented my thoughts almost perfectly when I read it. In both battles, Luffy was knocked down but came back stronger. Both Katakuri and Kaido are hiding their true selves, Katakuri to protect his family and Kaido to protect his dream. And most importantly, both battles were interfered by someone else and Luffy almost died from it. Basically, after finally meeting another suitable candidate to awaken Joy Boy after Odin, the fight once again is sabotaged by an outside force. And I mean, just look at Kaido's face here, the strongest being in the world. This is just pure pain and trauma. And so after taking out the CP0 agent and descending into the castle, for a moment there it seems like he's back to his old self, reassuming his role as the hard villain who is worse than Orochi, someone he genuinely despises for what he did, saying the most tyrannical things. <laughs> But, and I think that's very important, he is clearly not recovered from that shock at all. Because in chapter 1042, for example, Kaido says things like, winners need no justification, and those content to die for honor are losers. But isn't Kaido the one yearning for an honorable death the most? <laughs> Kaido really wants to die for honor, he hates winning in disgrace, and he wants to change the world. And I would even go so far as to say that he wants to be the good guy that brings peace and freedom to the world, but he can't acknowledge it because he's the only one who can do it, no matter at what cost in this moment right now. By the way, if you want more breakdowns like this and stay up to date with what's happening in the story, I make videos like these every single week. So consider subscribing if you are a true mad lad. So what does that mean for the remaining battle? Well, not only is Luffy of course alive, but at least right now, he really seems to have awakened Joy Boy and his devil fruit in the process as well. I personally actually think that Luffy will liberate Kaido in a multitude of ways. Well, first of all, just like against Katakuri, Luffy will make it clear that he doesn't think that a fight between pirates needs to be fair, thus lifting Kaido's guilt for his earlier victory. Second, in whatever shape or form it'll end up being, Kaido will realize that Luffy has become Joy Boy. And so, no matter if this was his hope all along, or if he really just wanted to become Joy Boy himself, this burden will now have been lifted from his shoulders. Joy Boy has returned. And so this will finally give Kaido the achievement that Roger, Whitebeard and co had before their deaths, being the one to bring about the return of the one who will bring the dawn. But most importantly, Luffy will understand Kaido's true feelings in this last part of their fight, all that shame and guilt that he's built up, and tell him exactly what he will need to hear to finally drop his tyrannical tough guy shell. And I personally believe that then Kaido will actually have to die at the end of this arc, hopefully in an effort to help Luffy and his crew, maybe against the marines or Blackbeard or whoever will definitely be there to pick on the survivors. In other words, Kaido will get the well-deserved honorable death that he always wanted. And so the tragic reason that it was Luffy who was able to become Joy Boy after all this time and Kaido and the rest couldn't is because Luffy actually lived the principle of Joy Boy all his life liberating people, creating joy around the world and protecting those who need protecting. I really really genuinely think that by trying to force Joy Boy back into existence and using the people of Wano, Kaido betrayed the core values of what it means to bring the dawn. Because Luffy has already started to change the world basically right from the beginning of the story. And so this video isn't enough by itself. If you really want to know what made Luffy the only possible candidate 
to become Joy Boy, you just can't ignore this video right here where I break down why Luffy could awaken the Sun God and what this awakening means for the past and future of One Piece.